Congratulations! We have a really extra long show for you. It's a mid-season review. We're looking at all the positions of relevance, the top guys. We're going to tell you who we think drops out. Maybe those are some guys you could trade away high. And who is outside the, the top positions who's coming in? Who's going to break in? Who's going to, you might say, get loose on the field? Uh, stay tuned, check it out, like the video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. Whether you're a crypto pro or a total beginner, you can finally earn Bitcoin the easy way, Jason. Yes! The easiest way with the world's first Bitcoin rewards credit card from BlockFi. You can earn unlimited Bitcoin on every qualifying purchase you make. We all know about credit card rewards and points. Make sure you're investing towards your future and just automatically get some Bitcoin as you when you buy stuff. You go to the store, you earn 1.5% back, in Bitcoin on all qualifying purchase with no reward limits, plus there's no annual fee, no foreign transaction fees, just Bitcoin earned on every single qualifying purchase. Right now, our listeners can get a bonus of $25 in crypto after you make your first purchase with the credit card when you sign up at BlockFi.com slash footballers. That's a $25 bonus in crypto deposited right into your account after you make your first purchase. But you have to use our URL, BlockFi.com slash footballers, Start earning Bitcoin back on all your qualifying purchases today. BlockFi.com slash footballers. Not all will be eligible. Geographic, regulatory, and underwriting restrictions apply. Fees and terms are subject to change. Additional terms and service at BlockFi.com. BlockFi is a financial technology company. Banking services provided by Evolve Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome back to Fantasy Footballers for Wednesday, November 3rd. The goatee persists. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome in, Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Lots to talk about today. We've got news. We've got our midseason review today, which I'm really excited about. We've got the Thursday night preview. How are you boys doing? I'm doing fantastic. Uh, another wild night for me of slaying dragons, doing real heroic Man, cool man stuff. Super mm, cool. Not nerdy stuff at no, all. The coolest of cool. Super cool. I was <laughs> um I'm obviously cool. I've got to go tea. Uh so I'm I'm feeling great today. Um I think all the you know, everyone looks at me and goes, check out that guy's goatee. I really liked uh the when you came in this morning and you had the leather vest on, right? Of course, and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> Darn right, you got to go. You were just you just went full Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's right. <laughs> uh, Shave the head. Oh, Stone Cold. That's another. Co I mean, you could keep this thing, Jay, and you can go Walter White next year. Yeah, if you you can hang on to Walter White. Stone Cold's a great option. Awesome. Uh, I I woke up to the self esteem boost that uh, I saw a YouTube comment said you know Andy. Andy looks pretty sickly. I hope everything's okay. Um, I haven't been sick. I'm fine. This yeah. is my nor it's my normal face. Yeah. <laughs> just my, <laughs> no, yes. my normal sickliness. It's just how he looks. Yeah. I, I get that all the time. I'm not with sick, uh, but they're like like, you mad? Nope. Just my face. Yeah, just no, this face. is just it's just me from the front, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry I shaved my face. Um, but I'm glad get to be some back sun. here. My son is doing great. We're we're well. I'll be back in studio next week. And um, shout out to both of our producers, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, for making things sound mighty nice with me remotely recording. And, they are um, fantastic. And I don't like to compliment them in public, but they do such a good job. I know. I'm thinking about... Producers, please delete that from the <laughs> audio strike recording. That. Strike that. <laughs> You're only a good producer if you strike that. <laughs> Um, no, we should put them on payroll at some point. Um, I agree. Well, let's, uh, let's remind you about our Twitter at the FF ballers, Jason at Jason FFL, Mike at FF hitman. I'm at Andy Holloway. Uh, you can find us on all social media platforms, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. We're on TikTok. We're on YouTube. 
Uh, you can you can see <laughs> how gross I look on YouTube. <laughs> um, and a reminder, we are live on Spotify Green Room this afternoon. Oh, as yeah. we are every Wednesday. It's a party. It's a good time. Sometimes news breaks mid-show and people react and... Um, you know, it's an interactive adventure, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. We've been having a lot of fun with that. Quick shout out to the same name because our Megalobol leader is still Hindu 1974. Oof. All but right. He lost. he lost, but he's still the leader. What a loser. <laughs> but uh, seven and one in the Megalobol. And um, it looks like Jones Mark J10. Only 10 points behind. Well, we're inching towards playoffs, aren't we? They start a little earlier in the Mega Bowl? They do. Okay. Yeah, week 12 will be the beginning of the playoffs. And then that's when, um, like, Derrick Henry's promised to be back by then? or Yes, to... definitely. Mm -hmm. Let's do some buy-sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. What's happening here? I'm getting, I'm winning the buy sells now. I mean, this is not this is not normal. It's crazy. I got all three last week. That's yeah, crazy. Um, stop clock. It's right twice a day. <laughs> that did these two weeks. Um, <laughs> week nine buy or sell. Let's let's go here. Uh, received a trade offer for this player, or rather, sending this player my way yesterday. But. Um, Buy or sell DJ Moore against New England this week. Is he a top 20 wide receiver? Man. He's been top 12 weeks two, three, and four. He has been a wide receiver 26 or worse weeks five through eight. Still averaging 9.5 targets, but, you know, a, a same Darnold target is not the same as a regular target. Nope. So what do you guys say? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell this one. I think that, you know, New England, we, we talk about it every week. They take out your number one option. Last week we – uh summarize that that could be Mike Williams. They Mike Williams was certainly taken out. And I think that um, here's who I know isn't the, the number one option. It's not Darnold. They're not afraid of Darnold. But if they can shut down DJ Moore and let 20 targets go Robbie Anderson's way, that's how New England's going to win. So I will sell on DJ Moore being um, a top option. What if Christian McCaffrey is back? I think that's helpful to DJ Moore. They'll have to focus that direction, and we'll get into McCaffrey in the news. Um, I'm not thinking he's back, but I will sell either way. I will. <sighs> Let's. I, we've got to be positive here for DJ Moore. Uh, you're because if I have DJ Moore, I'm playing him. I'm gonna buy top twenty. Let's get McCaffrey back on the field. Like I have influence or power over these things happening. But he's just – he's such a good player, and the volume is there for it to be such a whiff for four straight weeks. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, six for 73. That's not the worst in the world. That That's – well, he was wide receiver 26 against the Giants. That's close. But I'm going to buy it. I will buy that DJ Moore returns back to the top 20. What's helpful for your buy is that there are four teams on buy. So that's right. Being in the top you didn't 20, consider that, I, did did not, you? I did not consider that. I will sell it despite that hot fact. Uh, New England is going to dismantle this offense. And maybe if McCaffrey comes back, there's a chance. But I just don't know if DJ Moore can get inside that top 20 without scoring. And I don't think he scores, so I guess I'll sell it. All right, Kyle Pitts facing New Orleans. 10-plus um, fantasy points. So the bar is, is low here. Uh, what are we doing? Buy or sell? I'm going to sell this. Um, obviously, the two weeks prior to this last week, he was, you know, 20 points. He doubled this line. Um, he is very important to the to the team. He is athletically gifted enough to do it, even if the coverage is rolled his direction. All that being said, this is a bad matchup because the New Orleans Saints are very good against tight end, and that's really now their primary focus. With with Calvin Ridley being out, and we saw this last week with the Carolina Panthers, they actually put Stephon Gilmore on pits, and that's just too much for a rookie coming in to be like, yeah, I know you're a really talented, physically uh, amazing NFL receiver, but let's put a Pro Bowl caliber corner on you, and if, uh, you know, if, if the New Orleans Saints – take that same game plan, that same approach, uh, you know, what if Marcus Lattimore goes on Kyle Pitts? 
No, he's not. It's going to be a bad night for Pitts. That's how I view it. I will sell. I I am going to. Oh goodness gracious, Jason! And uh, did you meet? That's okay. You you threw me off. You mean Marshawn Lattimore? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Like, yes. Marcus I do. Lattimore. What? what That's okay. his cousin. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, ten points. Ten points for Kyle Pitts without a touchdown. Very difficult against the the New Orleans Saints. That game, man. That game's gonna be not very much fun to to watch, which we'll have to break down uh, in the next couple of days. But yeah, I'll sell. I'll sell Kyle Pitts hitting the ten points. Uh, I'm gonna buy it. Uh, you're right. The Saints are outstanding against tight ends. He's not a tight end. They're awful against wide receivers. They're giving up a ton of points to them, and he's a wideout. So I think he gets to the ten point mark this week. I'll buy it and stand alone on that one. Um, last one here, Daryl Williams, who, despite the emergence of uh, Derek Gore, still ended up in in a pretty good place fantasy-wise last week. Daryl Williams running back for the Chiefs, taking on Green Bay. We got some news about Green Bay today we'll get into momentarily, but is Daryl Williams a top 20 running back this week? I will quickly jump in and just say I will buy this against Green Bay. I think he'll do enough in the in the passing game to uh, to just sneak in there with all those buy teams you mentioned. Yeah, I'm going to buy it as well with the, the top 20. What I want to highlight here and ask what's going on with Kansas City. So the last month for Daryl Williams, five targets, four, four, six. Where is that with your first-round pick pass-catching specialist running back, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, like – Obviously not right now because he's hurt, but I'm saying at the beginning of the season, where are these targets? And you're like, nah, you know, undrafted Daryl Williams. That's our dude. What are you doing? Well, hopefully they've changed kind of their approach as the season's gone poorly you know for they them. Won't. Clyde and when will be Clyde back comes and... back, they'll they'll actually give him targets because no, he's a won't. good pass catcher. No, I'm not saying they will. I'm saying hopefully, maybe. Yeah. This is a really tough line for me. I think top 20 is low enough where I really want to buy it. If Aaron Rodgers was playing, I would 100%. This would be a, a done deal. I would be buying it. But in this matchup, if Kansas City is out to a lead, I think you're going to see some Derek Gore. He is He's a better runner, or looked like it on the field, and, but his their worry with him is – uh, pass protection. Well, if they're not if they're able to actually run the the clock out against Jordan Love, I think Gore could really come in, but 20 is a little too low. Uh I I will buy this with you guys. All right, that was buy or sell brought to you by our friends at Pristine Auction. Make sure you use the code BALLERS when you go to pristineauction.com. You'll get a $10 credit towards some sweet sports memorabilia. You got Christmas coming up. Yeah, uh, that's a good way to uh surprise somebody with something special. So Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. We, we just got more news Ooh, just now. Odell Beckham Jr. excused from practicing. Oh, um, that's not cool. practicing today. He's been excused from it. Um, May I be excused from this show? Yes. No. <laughs> oh, Brooks, oh, Brooks says Brooks no. Brooks is the boss. I mean... We saw the – Josina Anderson is reporting this. Um, excused from practice today. He was ready to attend. I don't know if they're what they're doing. They, there is definitely the chance that this guy is cut. And I would the, agree. Like yesterday, if you missed it, I believe it was Odell's father. Is that who – It yes, was. Yeah, it was. it was his father. So he posted a a, a long video of – highlighting the the times that Baker Mayfield missed Beckham being wide open. Mm -hmm. He also, you know, with with the man has a he, like, he understands production. So at least I will give him that because he overlaid it with uh, everybody hurts by Ariam. <laughs> Just a, a classic song uh, where we all emote and feel pain as so as true. it's on. But he they he puts that up it, which I guess I just complimented his production, and then I got to detract because he put it up. It was like it was in portrait, but the video was a landscape, and it was tilted. It was it was that was a problem. But then a bunch of like Cleveland Browns players were liking the video. Oh, I didn't see that. And it's just why why are we doing this? That's this is not productive. This is not going to help Odell Beckham 
get more targets. This isn't going to help Baker Mayfield in the heat of battle. Look to Beckham. Like this Baker, is... Baker went with the route of, I'm going to throw the ball at Odo Beckham no matter what. We tried that. Yeah, it didn't We tried work. that a couple years ago, and they sucked. I know it's been this narrative street um, kind of a joke thing, but it is also true that Baker Mayfield has been a better quarterback without Odell Beckham than he has been with Odell Beckham. And that doesn't really make sense because when I watch a film, I don't I don't look at Beckham and say he's completely washed. He doesn't look right. horrible or like a bad wide receiver. But there is – these are human beings. There is the emotional aspect of a diva wide receiver just demanding. I mean, his father's posting 11-and-a-half-minute videos saying like – Give me the ball. He's, he's good. You suck, Baker. Uh, this is a detraction in the locker room. It it it, it hurts uh, the overall team, and and so I I would not be surprised with what you said, Andy. That if they just move on from him, I know there were trade discussions yesterday before the deadline from the Saints looking to perhaps acquire Odell Beckham in trade because of the next piece of news, which is the fact that. Michael Thomas released a statement this morning. He is out for the 2021 season. He had a setback Ugh. with the ankle. Uh, the ankle was set back by his own delay of surgery. This is a just a disaster. I mean, you, you look back at, at the fantasy landscape. Michael Thomas was the guy, the unanimous number one wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Now we essentially aren't going to see Michael Thomas for two seasons. And because next he, he, year. You know. Yeah. yeah go ahead. It, next year in the draft. He is going to plummet. I mean, what team is he on next year? You think sure. he's on the Saints next year? No, I mean, I told you yesterday before this news came out. You go, man, is he is he going to play this year? And I I straight up said, or you're like, is he ever going to yeah. play again? I said, not for the Saints. Yeah, that relationship is not healthy. Um, and yeah, I mean, the the future career. If you if you thought two years ago. Michael Thomas was the 101 in all dynasty formats. He was yeah. just this young, great um, wide receiver and has been worthless, and now his future looks murky at best. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's, you're not going to have seen him for two years. He will drop in drafts. This team will invest at wide receiver regardless of his – even if he somehow comes back, they're going to invest in free agency or the draft on a young, uh, prolific wide receiver – that's going to happen. That's going to diminish your confidence in him. So for dynasty players, you are your your pits are sweaty. Um, you have no trade value, and so that that's he's not playing. I mean, so drop him, cut him. You know, click the button as hard as you want. I I told in people redraft? that this morning. Yes, yes. Yeah, Obviously, in, in don't redraft. drop him yeah. in in dynasty, but in Sorry. a redraft, drop him, and um, that might be important because of this next piece of news. I know for Brooks and his super flex. He's got both Michael Thomas and Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers tested positive for COVID-19. He will not play in week nine against the Chiefs. Oh, there, man. There, there were conflicting reports immediately about uh, vaccinated or not vaccinated. Uh, his response then after Ian Rappaport came out. I mean, these weren't reports no, he, from He from cleared nobody. it up. He cleared he it up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he did not clear it up. He cleared it up by saying I'm immunized. Which could mean as a baby with not the COVID vaccine, we don't know. The only reason we're speculating on that is because it does impact protocol and how soon he could yep. even return. This team has been ravaged by um, an outbreak in recent weeks, and then you're supposed to get Devontae Adams back, but now Jordan Love's going to be the quarterback against the Chiefs. Changes the ceiling for the receiving options. You know this team, You know, if anything, you could probably look at A.J. Dillon as a viable flex this week yeah I, I don't disagree but how bummed is state farm right now oh they're not happy i mean, I mean they, they had rogers versus mahomes it was set up yeah they oh, probably true. have they probably have like special commercials all ready to go but not anymore yeah i mean uh, for what it's worth mike garofalo um after all the back and forth has kind of doubled down saying that he is not vaccinated even if okay. he's immunized he could have got COVID in the off season and have immunization but that does not count for the protocol so whether it's whether he's right or not Mike Garofalo is reporting post the back and forth that he will have to be out at least 10 days um and and if he's asymptomatic and everything is good the 10-day window will say that he can be back for next week but it certainly means that we that the following week is now more in question um, well, because at, of the protocol timelines. 
Yeah, if you look at Chandler Jones for Arizona, Chandler Jones missed two weeks um, recently. So it's it's just up in the air. Um, so we will follow up and let you know, and you can adjust your teams. I This news is absolutely devastating. What took place yesterday uh, on a ton of fronts, uh, the Raiders wide receiver, Henry Ruggs, He's facing a felony charge uh, for driving under the influence, was involved in a fatal car accident, resulted in the death of another person. The team proceeded to waive Henry Ruggs uh, yesterday afternoon after the incident, and it is highly probable we've seen the last of Henry Ruggs in the NFL. Mm -hmm. He faces a minimum two-year prison sentence for what he's being charged for. And um, really just a just a devastating situation, tragedy through and through, first to the, to the family of the victim, and then just for the life of this young man who's 22 and, um, you know, lost his own friend in an auto accident and then goes out and has this happen. Um, obviously, what, he was responsible for what took place, and... I just think about everybody involved, and it's just so heartbreaking. It is. It is completely devastating and 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 sad, and way beyond football. Let this be a reminder to everyone to be safe. Yes, out there, um, lives can change in you know the blink of an eye. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, make make wise decisions, and um, you know for fantasy, uh, Brian Edwards um, is someone that will at least have an opportunity. Um, to get more targets, uh, Hunter uh, Renfro. Hunter Renfro is probably the safest option to have a good baseline of targets. Where I'm curious is for the Raiders moving forward. Does Zay Jones step into a bigger role? He because he is kind of, I think he's like a one target per week guy, but it's usually a deep shot. And so does he try to step into that role of the field stretcher? How will you feel? If Brian Edwards still can't capitalize, Mike, will you finally with the, with this admit new opportunity? With, with with the opportunity to be the only wide receiver there of note, if he still sucks, then will you will you wash your hands of Brian Edwards or is that a never situation? Well, the, the thing is he doesn't suck at football. You think sure. it's that's <laughs> it's, it's done. It's pr it's proven that he's a good football player. Derek Carr just doesn't throw at him. Oh, okay. Okay. And that it's was proven by him catching the ball, or yes. Oh come on! You can't see all of those difficult catches that Brian Edwards has made this year and go, "That guy sucks." Yeah, I mean, I guess it's really the context of what we're saying. Whether he sucks, you if know, you, he doesn't. If you want to say no he NFL sucks. player sucks, but for fa for fantasy purposes, sure, sure, he's not yes. useful. And obviously, like, I mean, Odell Beckham does he suck? No, no, okay. of course but, not. Okay, so but he sucks. so I think we respect the. <laughs> The the potential talent of Brian Edwards. Um, That's and all. He's, I'm he's worth worth a worth a shot. Um, Christian McCaffrey designated to return from injured reserve. This does not mean he's been activated, but he's in the window now. He can practice, which was I mean we don't have the practice reports for today, but yeah. Wednesday was rumored for Christian McCaffrey to be back on the practice field. Yeah, I think this is the timeline that everyone basically expected. Uh, they want to get him out to practice because the only way to know for sure with this type of injury if he's good to go is to actually they don't they don't want to wait and then have him day one go out to a game they're going to you know test him uh put him through work and and see he will be a last minute activation I'm guessing this week if he is active I would I would presume that they might take a slower approach and maybe uh, use the 21 day window it might be another week but you just have to monitor and and uh, keep an eye out in the meantime Chuba Hubbard continues to be a decent fantasy option and and hopefully oh christian please no more setbacks yes don't do what you did last year and this year very tough matchup for chuba this week um but been involved and noah fant was placed on the COVID list positive test unlikely he'll be playing if you watch the game last week albert oh yeah albert oh man was heavily involved which is something this team has done like he they've used him I, in the red zone, they've used him alongside Noah Fant. Uh, it's one of the reasons why I had some hesitation about Fant earlier in the year, but you probably won't have him this year. You need to find a pivot option. Maybe that's uh, Friar Muth. Who knows? Sterling Shepard is expected to miss some time with a quad injury. Uh, Kadarius Tony should be all right. Uh, with Shepard out, Tony should have another opportunity to yep. 
Uh, they need to get him the ball yes, because they every do. time they get him the ball, good things happen. This um, last week, when Tony was active and a lot of people played him in Dynasty, they he wasn't involved. He wasn't even a part of the offense. He was catching the punts and the kickoffs or whatever, but then then he wasn't involved. It wasn't until Sterling Shepard went down that I, they finally like. Got I think it was him. the injury related. Like he was. He was highly questionable entering the weekend. Then that was, you know, kind of upgraded to it's questionable he's probably going to play. So I, I think it was all just related to that was their plan is to yes. keep it just he was an emergency use case and then he was yes. needed and then but they it, had to break the glass. It shows that and he's right. Like without Sterling Shepard, Kenny Galladay and this banged up offense, I think Kadarius Tony is going to be a very very good play this week. Kyler Murray, Hopkins, AJ Green, none of them practiced in the open part of practice today. I wouldn't panic on them just yet with the fact that the Cardinals are coming off the Thursday game and, you know, Murray is dealing with a sprained ankle, Hopkins the hamstring. Those two aren't really surprising. Green, maybe it's his pride that has been slightly – is he <laughs> is his pride destroyed? Did, has, did he not show his face? Has he Was been he out back? there in disguise? Has he been back since the, the, the interception incident? Wait, we didn't cut him? <laughs> I mean, I would have just – you I, don't come in the locker room. Stay on the field. Personally, I am I am concerned for Kyler Murray and Hopkins this weekend. Like, I think they'll probably play, but this is with with what was diagnosed as uh, the the ankle injury for Kyler Murray. They're saying, generally speaking, it's a one to three week timeline to heal up. If he's going to play through it, and he doesn't have that special Kyler Murray ability to move around like he's used to, mm -hmm. and DeAndre Hopkins is, I mean, clearly he is hurt. I just, I have concerns for fantasy football this weekend. Yeah, I think that's fair. I I will say this, one of the, um, one of the benefits of me missing um, a couple of episodes of the show was I was not there to react with you guys to what happened mm. with, with what I'll dub the glitch. I mean, this was a, a programming <laughs> error. In AJ Green's mind, sure. did did you see the um, who did this just happen to? There was another play this past week. Oh, it was the Herbert play? Did you see him throw the ball to Jared Cook in yeah. the flat? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yep. was like that it was one, like an, It looked the same to me. It was a little similar, but it was like they they just broke the the wrong way on the ball. Like like Cook went to the left and and Herbert threw it to the right for. For AJ Greens, it was frustrating because you know you've seen the like the meme going around of controller disconnected. It just was like he, it was like he just stopped. I mean, it, it's just it's also on a personal level when you have when you have a play where if he catches that football, you win the game and he's the hero mm -hmm. on prime time to go all the way to the to stay much, undefeated. Things went south. Uh, from that moment on in in pretty much uh, every avenue of my world from that moment that was kind of the time uh, the timeline broke off like Loki or something and that was when oh yeah you're <laughs> right, a variant now right before, I'm a variant yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right before that play Andy you peaked so yeah. I'm sorry man but it, you had a good run our it's family all got down sick. from there Derek Henry the immortal one broke yeah. down there's uh. another timeline where he catches that pass that's all I'm saying and it I, oh, I'm sure. partying. I'm partying in that timeline. Uh, Logan Thomas, his window to return. Uh, he's been um, activate, activate, and he'll be back. After, he'll be back after the bye. Logan Thomas will. So yeah, you, you you might not have to pick him up right now, but uh, oh. uh, hi, we or I highlighted him uh, a couple weeks ago that his schedule is set up very nice for for people who don't have a locked in tight end. I would definitely pick him up now. Don't okay, wait another week. Yeah. yeah, especially if you have any kind of IR because he can go in it. He's not going to even though he's been activated to the practice, you stay technically on the IR for platforms. So, you'll be able to um, you know, stash him. I I, I do have a little bit of concern of like, okay, Ricky Seals Jones has proven to be a valuable piece of this offense and maybe they utilize more two tight end sets, and then it's split. Possible. That is a possibility. I don't think that will happen. I think he'll come in and replace, but it's not a lot. It's not a guarantee that Logan Thomas comes back to the 100% uh, workload that kind of he was receiving and that now Ricky Seals Jones receives. It could be more of a Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz situation after the bye, especially considering that they have this bye week now to practice with both players active. 
All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the Sleeper app, join the breaking alerts channel, and then you'll be informed of whatever the heck happens with Odell Beckham Jr.'s dad. <laughs> that is true. Before we move to the midseason review, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. If you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than right now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving fantasy footballers listeners 40% off their award winning home security. We love Simply Safe. It has everything you need to make your home safe. Indoor, outdoor cameras, comprehensive sensors, all monitored around the clock by trained professionals who send you the instant or the help the instant that you need it. Simply Safe was named the best home security system of 2021 by US News and World Report. You can easily customize a system for your home online in minutes and even get a free custom recommendations from Simply Safe. They have protected our studio forever. They protect Brooks his wealth, his home, his family, his dog, everything. Simply safe. They're taking care of him over there, and that's why we love endorsing them on this show. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday sale. Get 40% off your new home security system by by visiting simplysafe.com/footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com/footballers for 40% off your entire system. Hurry, this offer ends soon. And we'd like to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. IP Vanish is a virtual private network, a VPN for short. It's a super important tool, helps you safely browse the internet. I have, I think most of us have installed and used IP Vanish now for years yeah, around get, here. Get your eyes off of what I, I'm doing. It's yeah, my business. Yeah, you can use it on your computers, your tablets, your phones, even things like your Fire Stick. When you're streaming media, all your data is encrypted. What you're reading, what you're searching, what you're watching, whatever it is that you're doing, it's your business. And that's important because, you know, you don't want other people coming in and seeing and Or, you know, it's not just a matter of, oh, what are you looking at? It's, it's your data that, that people use for nefarious reasons. Oh, nefarious. And uh, right now, you can get 65% off their annual plan. That's equal to six months for free. IP Vanish, super easy to use. It's a click of a button. You turn it on. Very easy, and you can go to ipvanish.com slash footballers, claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and their current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best, even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. Review Asaurus Rex. All right, it is our midseason review episode. We want to walk through each of the position groups, talk through the top 10, talk about players we think are going to drop out, talk about players that might climb in, uh, and reflect a little bit while giving you advice on these guys moving forward. Let's start at quarterback. Right now, we're looking at the top 10 quarterbacks in fantasy points per game, minimum five games played, four point per passing touchdowns for quarterbacks. Josh Allen is sitting at number one right now, 26.5 fantasy points per game. It's interesting because I don't feel like this has been pure dominance from mm. Josh Allen thus far on the fantasy season, and yet here he is at number one, three weeks as the quarterback one. Last year, he only did that one time. I think it speaks a little bit to some of the other guys and the fact that we haven't seen as many kind of explosions at the quarterback position. Yeah, I mean, the the reality is um, Josh Allen has had has been pretty boom bust um, in the sense that three of his first four weeks, so the, the opening month of the season, he was pretty meh. Um, only one time was he a quarterback one in that in that stretch. But when you have three times on the season where you are the quarterback one, you are winning people weeks – and dominating it takes him to the top in four point scoring. Uh, I th I think the only quarterback he did this last year too. Like it, I, I know that you you get to the end of the season, you see the big number one. Josh Allen helps you win a fantasy championship because in the the playoff stretch he was dominant. But he opened last year on fire. You know, mm -hmm. a, a top three guy, th quarterback three, 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 six, and then a full month of being top fifteen or or worse at the fantasy quarterback position. So this this is just par for the course to me for Josh Allen, but it's far more great than bad, uh, which is why he continues to be the number one guy. Yeah, there's only two quarterbacks, I think, this year when I when I 
think about the midseason review and I go, there's only two quarterbacks that have just been really great for almost the entire – like just so reliable. Um, and one of those is the next – is the number two quarterback so far on the season? Tom Brady's just been just unbelievable. He he had one bad game. He he doesn't Nothing have like you can say can <laughs> take he's me away. So good, man. I mean, matchup it doesn't matter. You just play Tom Brady. Leads the league in completions, attempts, passing yards, passing touchdowns. He hasn't even had Antonio Brown for half of these games. I mean, he or is Gronk. He is set up. I mean, I've I've had to decide between these two guys in one league, and it's like, how do you pick Allen or Brady on a week to week basis? And the answer is, you, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you have, both of them do the same thing every week. Uh, you can see it in the numbers here, and you're happy. So uh, Brady has been the best value in fantasy drafts because where you drafted Tom Brady was nowhere near Mahomes, nowhere near Lamar, uh, right. Kyler. So he's delivering, which is awesome to see. Lamar is at number three right now. I don't think I think that's under the radar a little bit because the numbers aren't uh, MVP season Lamar, but he has had a couple monster games. He's had three weeks outside the top fifteen. It's almost been a combo of like the MVP year and also last year, where you know how do you view Lamar moving forward? Uh, you've moving forward. He's locked in. He's to me. He's a top five option. It hasn't like. It hasn't been as consistent. Like he hasn't strung multiple weeks in a row where he's of of fantasy dominance. You know, week one, bah. Week week two, crushes. Then week three and four, he's back to the outside the top twelve. But because of the because his probability of having a boom game is higher than most of the quarterbacks, he's still locked into that. Top five, probably top three for me. Let me give you the rest of the top ten, and we can talk about names that we want to. After Lamar is Matthew Stafford, then Jalen Hurts, then Kyler Murray, Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Justin Herbert at nine, and then Joe Burrow sliding into the top ten now. Mm, good for who's you. He's been on fire since week four. The, cure, the quarterback three with top 12 performances in four or five weeks. Um Obviously had the kind of disastrous ending to last game. But, you know, Matthew Stafford, I'll bring up briefly. He has a 8.1% touchdown rate. His previous career average was 4.5%. But this, to me, is not an outlier. It's an outcome of the coach and the receivers and the system. So Stafford, I feel like, is really locked as a must-start guy rest of the year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that you look at the last three weeks, he's – this is a new player on a new team that is just getting better and better as they go. I think um, Stafford is someone that you can trade high f for and be happy with to just lock in. Um, you, you know, usually I want a mobile quarterback, someone that can run. Mm -hmm. There's only, there's very few guys outside of that I want. Brady obviously is one. Mahomes can run, but he's not a mobile rushing quarterback. And I would put Stafford into that list where I'm confident in him each and every week. The other name I, I would bring up is – Patrick Mahomes um the last month has been really bad one top 12 performance things haven't looked good there's fumbles there's interceptions um obviously half of news media right now uh, regarding the NFL is what's going on with the Chiefs here's what we know their defense is bad and Patrick Mahomes is good so I think that he is maybe someone to target after a bad month I would expect him to be phenomenal going forward um, because of how bad their defense is, he's gonna, you know, maybe, maybe that's what's making him push a little too much. He feels and, like he has to carry everything. Yeah, and he's just, he's not just running the offense and going down and square. He's trying to make magic too often. But I think that good coaches and good quarterbacks will find a way to rectify that to to say, okay, we need to manufacture some stuff here, add some things into the offense, and it's a long season. Over the course of the season, I think it gets corrected. Who is uh, someone inside the top 10 right now that you think will be out by season's end? I'll, I'll jump in here first, and it's not that I dislike the player at all. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback, but it, I, would, I would say Justin Herbert because even though he has the physical traits to be a runner, it's, it's crazy. Of, like, the, his athletic profile is actually very, very similar to Josh Allen. Now, he doesn't, he doesn't move like Allen. There's, you could tell there's a difference between uh, when they take off and scramble. But 
you've seen what happens when to a to a non rushing quarterback when the touchdowns don't flow. And the fact that he can have those games so frequently where he's just he's throwing one touchdown, he's throwing two touchdowns. And if he if he has a two touchdown game, then he has to be perfect. He can't he can't have any turnovers because that one turnover will then take you out of the top twelve. So to me, he's like a fringe QB one. Won't won't surprise me to see him stay in there. But if I have to pick of any of these guys to fall out, that would be my pick. Yeah. That, 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 sorry. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Um, I I was gonna pivot. I was gonna pivot to my pick. So why don't you voice your concerns or questions on on Herbert? It was just a follow up question for Mike of whether or not you view Herbert as a you start him every week because you want the prolific games with Keenan and Mike Williams. Or is he somebody that in a tough matchup you will you would stream a Kirk Cousins, you'd stream a Joe Burrow, you'd stream somebody else again. I guess you can't stream Burrow, but you'd stream somebody else in a good matchup, or would you just lock him in still? Uh looking at the rest of his schedule, maybe the game against Pittsburgh, I sure. would consider uh moving on to a streamer, but that streamer has to be like I have such confidence that it's a not just a crappy quarterback in a good matchup. It's a good quarterback in a great matchup. So it's like – It's T.Y. Helton against Houston. Right. Yeah, you you just you have very high confidence that the, the streamer is going to come through. Otherwise, yeah, it's he is who he is, which is a, a low-end quarterback one that will have explosive games. Which says to me that you might want to trade him. If you, if you think that there's issues with the lack of mobility um, and you know you're not going to be pivoting, you're going to be playing him every single week, you're gonna end up with some of the bad games if you could trade, you know, high. You know, I wonder if you could trade him for a Matthew Stafford, um, who's who's been on fire. The the quarterback for me that I worry about is Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts been excellent. When earlier when I said there's two quarterbacks that I think of who's just been great all year, it was Tom Brady and Jalen Hurts. Um, obviously one bad week this last week when they blew the socks off the Detroit Lions. Right. Jalen Hurts actually looked good for the first time. Um, in real life and was terrible for fantasy. Um, and the whole, the only reason I worry about Jalen Hurts is just that I feel like he could lose his job. Um, I don't think he's going to be bad for fantasy playing, um, but he's my biggest concern of just, man, they, they go, he's not the answer. If they lose a couple games, if they are out of the playoff contention hunt and a month from now, um, you know, maybe Gardner comes in that, that is my only fear with Jalen Hurts. That's the same name I have. The gap between number three and number 10 is three points. So it's kind of Allen and Brady on their own, and then, then Lamar through Burrow. It's pretty mm -hmm. tight, so falling out of the top 10 what, wouldn't be very hard to do if you had a few bad games. Is there somebody outside the top 10 that we didn't discuss that you think could be a second-half star at the quarterback position? I threw Aaron Rodgers out there simply because— Not this uh, week. Not this week, but uh, just, just the ceiling and the fact that there have been games where he's been— um, you know, you've had injuries, uh, you've had the COVID stuff and missing Devante and you just know what he can offer you and how he won people championships last year. Uh, it, it's hard to leave Rogers off that list. And I think I'd lock him into my lineup, you know, over a Hertz or a Herbert or a Burrow in the second half of the year. It is funny that Aaron, Ro Aaron Rodgers is great. No one's going to debate that, but he's very similar to Justin Herbert. He doesn't do a lot on the ground anymore, and so you have to have a perfect game. You gotta you gotta have three touchdowns, or you're disappointed. Um, and that's the reason the guy I think could get in there is uh, Taysom Hill. Uh, yeah. Give me a quarterback that runs a ton. Um, if you are uh, a quarterback that is going to go out there and put 50 yards up on the ground, your baseline is super high for fantasy. He will obviously. Um, played four games last year, was a quarterback one in all four of them. So he is the name to monitor once he gets back from the concussion protocol. And I think Ryan Tannehill is is set up here for a real uh, explosion. You look at – like he's he's played well. He's he's currently in, in overall points a top 12 quarterback by weeks, you know, point per game. Maybe he didn't make this list. But he's at a 3.8% touchdown rate where – the past three years of his career have all been over six. And even if that number doesn't get up to six, they're going to have to change the the offense in in Tennessee without Derrick Henry. Without, without the Yeti, I don't think you can just keep – you can't carbon copy what they were doing with Adrian Peterson. So I think that the, the passing touchdowns go up, the passing volume will have to go up, and Tannehill becomes a second-half star. What an amazingly 
cool science experiment we get to see. We get to see Ryan sure. Tannehill will be very without interesting. Derrick Henry and say how much of his efficiency has been the fact that they're trying to stop the run that because teams are going to do that now and, and that's one I do, I do disagree on that one because of that I don't know if I believe in Tannehill without without what the play action pass represents with Derrick Henry mm -hmm. so that one will be I mean you're right it's kind of like a live test here of you know teams are not going to respect the run the way they did with Derrick Henry right but. It might have a lot to do with whether Julio Jones is a part of this offense or not. Because if he's never a functional part, I know what I'm doing. I'm stopping it. I'm stopping AJ Brown. That's all I'm doing. And sure. and, and I'm gonna let Adrian Peterson try to, to get down the field. So uh that should be interesting to watch. And maybe that would kind of confirm that Tannehill's a better player than we even think he is if he can do that. Um running backs. Let's talk about the top twelve running backs, fantasy points per game, half point per reception <sighs> yeah number one's derrick henry that's uh he's my pick to not be there yeah <laughs> uh he may still be there at the end of the year <laughs> i mean they're true it's possible he was uh, crushing man over 22 points per game meanwhile no one else is over the 20 threshold like he was a true advantage uh, at the running back position yeah yeah, and Al Borland, my uh, division mate, is, is rejoicing in the fact that I don't get him and have that advantage for the rest of the year. Eckler at, is uh, number two at 19.5 points per game. Jonathan Taylor's at three. Najee at four. Kamara at five. Cordero Patterson at six. This dude, At the man. halfway mark, man. Love it. Ezekiel Elliott at seven. Daryl Henderson at eight. Aaron Jones at 9, Kareem Hunt at 10, Joe Mixon at 11, and DeAndre Swift at 12. This is all fantasy points per game. You know, Cordero with no Ridley, I don't think he goes anywhere personally. That's one of the big names you bring up. Number 6, he's just too he's too important to this offense because they just don't they just can't function without him. Yep. And he does it in two different parts of the game, so I have confidence he's going to stay there. The question is whether you would you know, if somebody in your league doesn't have confidence in Patterson persisting at this level, would you go trade somebody for him? Would you go trade somebody that surprised the other manager? I, I don't know if Kareem Hunt fits that bill, but that kind of player where you say, I'm willing to give you a, a, a perceived guarantee at running back to go get Cordero because maybe the ceiling's even higher than we think. Yeah, see, I, I, that, that's one where I disagree with you. He would be my pick to fall out. And I realize, not, not because he's going to be bad. He is so necessary to this offense now. I think his receiving work will be five, six, seven receptions a game. So he'll be fine. The problem is he's had a lot of his fantasy value come via touchdowns. Um, he's got seven touchdowns already on the year. And without Ridley, I think this offense – will not be as good and if the touchdown opportunities don't come that's my only worry um I don't think he drops to um a, being a bad fantasy asset but I'm I'm not confident that he is going to be able to uh, you know stay he's he's the running back six in points per game and that's because of touchdowns I just can't see that happening on this offense the rest of the way personally didn't you last week you did bring up though that the reason you didn't have confidence going into this week was because of the presence of Gage and Ridley so, well, that was, and now the confidence is gone because Gage and Ridley. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, the, the reality, which was, one is it? It's, Jason? Bo it's both. It's both because <laughs> you, you had last week, he was having receptions, um, with, Ra with Russell Gage out. Um, he was getting a lot of targets. And so with, he the took all of Gage's targets this past with week the, too. Exactly. With the full compliment coming back, it was, it was worrisome, but Russell Gage doesn't, help the offense score more touchdowns Calvin Ridley does so Russell Gage coming back hurt his target volume I think the target volume comes back up now but Calvin Ridley going away hurts the touchdown upside I think he's uh, here to stay um you know I, I Kareem Hunt is in this list I feel like I took the the easy way out but I mean he's he's the name that I'll pick for somebody in the top 12 that won't be there by season's end uh, you've you've had the the injury and it's just he doesn't fit the mold of the rest of these guys, which are kind of the most of them are alpha mold, the number one player for their team. So 
you know, I, I don't know where this season is headed for Cleveland. It hasn't been a very good direction right now. They've dealt with so many different injuries and, you know, Baker may not stick around if he gets re-injured. So I'll, I'll go hunt. Yeah. I, I think Kareem Hunt is, he's still safe when he comes back, assuming he's actually healthy when he comes back, seeing about, you know, in those games, he was a right around the 50% snap mark. Like they really were splitting between him and Nick Chubb. And like, as seen in this, this last week, like Dearness Johnson was given an opportunity inside the green zone, essentially. And he made it a, a tremendous cut scores, a touchdown. So they're not, they, even with cream hunt out, uh, the Cleveland Browns said, no, we're, we're still going to do some, uh, some splitting here, so I, I expect that Hunt will be back into. You don't think Dearness will back. be used more after I don't, he's proven I, himself? I don't think so. I mean, it, it's been an incredible story, but when you have, I, I don't think it turns into a three-person timeshare. Yeah, the money and the talent of Chubb and Hunt, and we saw we saw Dearness come in and and do well last year, and when the guys came back, it was like, thank you for your service. Yes, you are no longer needed. Mike, who do you think can will drop out? Uh. I I think it's possible that Joe Mixon falls out. I don't it's it's hard to know exactly what is going on here with, with Mixon cuz he's he's been very good for fantasy football. The volume is absolutely outrageous. He has the second most rushing attempts in the league. But he just he has though these games where like even though the Cincinnati offense is starting to fully take off especially in the passing game with all of the the elite talent there and Burrow stepping it up, it, Mixon still has these times where he's just his efficiency goes to crap. Uh, even even when you have to worry about the passing game. So if anyone can slip out, I think that Mixon could. You know, he'll still be a top fifteen guy, but if I have to pick one of them, he would be my pick. Someone outside the top twelve that will be a second half star. You know, I I've got a. I think Dalvin Cook is going to be sure. You know, it's it's strange for him to be outside of this top twelve at this point in time. Obviously, dealt with the injury, but if I know anything about Minnesota, is when they struggle, they go back to the room and then they decide we're going to run the ball more. I mean, that's just what Mike Zimmer does, and the identity of the offense, much like in Tennessee, is predicated on Dalvin Cook's success, play action passing off of Dalvin Cook, and him being the the Piece, you know, if if you can get him at a discount right now, right? Like you could be there. There's a chance he's outside the top twelve. He could be the best running back in the entire second half. Like not many players outside sure. the top twelve could be the number one over the second half of the season. Cook fits that mold, so he's my pick. Yeah, my pick is David Montgomery. I mean, uh, another player that's dealt with injury. He'll probably not be back this week, even though his timeline would allow him to be because they've got the bye week next week. So I think he comes back fully healthy off the bye. He was really, really good beforehand. Um, he was one of those players at the, the start of the year. We said, man, he just looks actually special, actually different. And Khalil Herbert is giving people a lot of fear, and I, I don't think that that's necessary. Um, you know, it, it was a 70-30 split to start the year. Uh, with David Montgomery, uh, so I don't think David Montgomery is going to a 50-50 time share. I think Khalil Herbert's just played his way into the RB2 role, and if anything, you, you look at the success of the running game with Khalil Herbert, and you say, yeah, David Johnson's going to, or David Montgomery's going to come back into that successful running game system. I think he has a great second half of the year, and he's got a really good schedule as well. And I want to shout out a person, look, the, we've clowned on him for uh, kind of a while here for fantasy football. We? But, okay. I'm I'm looking in the mirror. I'm looking in the mirror, absolutely. And it's Josh Jacobs of the Las Vegas Raiders who, when he's been on the field this year, he has been productive, shockingly, running a bunch of routes, seeing targets, uh, something that we had been begging the Raiders to do uh, over and over. And then they're like – we're going to bring in Kenyon Drake. And so it was just the, how do you see a world where you pay $10 million to a pass catching running back that Josh Jacobs targets go up? Nothing makes sense for how the coaching staff uh, operated on things. And then looking at the schedule, giants, Kansas city, the Bengals, Dallas, Washington, like it's pretty juicy here. We, uh, we talked about it for Derek Carr uh, on yesterday's show. It's real juicy here for Josh Jacobs too. 
So I think that he is someone that, like, even – you can maybe go trade low for Dalvin Cook. It's possible. I think you could definitely trade low for Josh Jacobs right now and, and him really surprise for fantasy football over the second half. Yeah. When you go try to trade for him, just go show them the box score for Kenyon Drake the last two weeks. And right. make, a, make a case as though they're sharing, uh, which is not really the case. Breaking news. Take that. <laughs> right in the face. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Uh, we do have some breaking news here. Giants running back Saquon Barkley, he tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, so he, he's vaccinated, so the protocol will be shorter for him as he works his way through it. But it's like, this is actually goodness a, gracious. I, I, this one is very unique and weird. He he's the He's the biggest name, so he's the one being reported, but it wasn't actually him. 12 players or 12 players and personnel tested from positive the from the Giants. On retest, only uh, the running back coach uh, for the Giants uh, was confirmed positive on the second test. So they're they're in the retesting phase. I don't know if they got a He actually batch already of... tested positive again this morning. Oh, so he was one of the retest positives? He did retest. He, he's awaiting the results of a full retest. He tested positive again on a rapid this morning. So we're just following that news. Um so his follow-up rapid, positive, follow-up, uh, full retest. Yeah. So, wait. so even if he were physically available uh, from the ankle injury this weekend, sounds like he'll probably be, he'll be back after the bye week. And it's worth mentioning, this is like I, I was listening to the practice situation of the Giants team. The whole day has kind of like been – supplant like yeah. sidetracked so even Sucks. even if even if everything was uh false positives and it, and it comes back normal their practice schedule has been uh messed with this week all right let's uh let's jump into the wide receivers here top 12 in fantasy points per game and half ppr cooper cup of coffee at number one by a lot i mean just yes he is basically at the points per game level of you know he's he's outpacing every running back that's still healthy uh, actually, he was outpacing Derrick Henry. Uh, he's outpacing every quarterback not named Josh Allen, Tom Brady, and Lamar Jackson. Um, he is He's averaging f the same fantasy points per game as his quarterback. So imagine a league where you get to play Matthew Stafford in your wide receiver position, and that's Cooper Cup for your team right now. Debo's number two, Tyreek three, Jamar Chase four. What a rookie year for him. Devontae Adams is five. This is all points per game. Antonio Brown is six, Hollywood Brown seven, DK Metcalf eight, Mike Williams nine, Mike Evans ten, CeeDee Lamb eleven, and Adam Thielen still inside the top 12 in fantasy points per game. Um, it's crazy. I mean, I, I like this midseason review for wide receivers because you get to kind of remember the level that certain people were or are at. Like Antonio Brown, for example, is – yes. Points per game, 0. 0.7 points behind Devontae Adams at this point in the season. So when the time comes for his return, we need to remember the value. Right now it may, you know, whether it, it goes right back to that, I don't know, but he was dominating. Yeah, he's still a fantastic wide receiver. Uh, the, uh, looking at the list here, if I have to pick a player that I think can fall out, I'm, I'm just going to take the – I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to take the player who's sitting there at 12, so barely hanging on, uh, with which is Adam Thielen. And it's – you for Adam Thielen, it's the it's the Breaking Bad gif. It's the – he can't keep getting away with this because the guy just keeps scoring touchdowns and saving fantasy weeks. Cause he's a good player. But looking forward for the season, Dalvin Cook has – two rushing touchdowns. Dalvin Cook has two total touchdowns on the season. Wow. That's going to bounce back, and I think that that comes at the expense of Adam Thielen scoring. So I'm not saying Adam Thielen, I'm not going to hold on to the take that he'll be terrible or, or, or not return value. He's going to be solid for fantasy, but I think he falls out. Uh, the player that I would pick to fall out would be Mike Williams, and I really hope it doesn't happen, but we have to be realistic. It's, it's really sad what has happened here because yeah. the beginning of the year was great. The that first, was fun. The first three weeks were unbelievable, and the target volume made it seem like it was going to be very, very sticky, very short. Um, the reality is it hasn't been since week three. 
He only has one good game. We're going into week nine. The, the, his pace since week three, he's on pace four. Receptions, and that's not a good number. Right. So I again, this is one I I hope is wrong. Um, obviously, wide receivers are inconsistent, so he can bounce back. We know his upside. His upside is two hundred yards and two touchdowns in any given game, but he's got a long track record of disappointing us. So, <laughs> well, I was uh, gonna say the, the 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 what you said about wide receivers are inconsistent. Yeah, that's true. But players that you think made the jump to be an elite number one. Don't put up a wide receiver 106, wide receiver 72, wide receiver 73. Exactly. You don't get those from Devontae Adams. He may he may give you – like the target volume stays consistent for those players. So I think that that's a – that one fits. Hollywood fits as well uh, for me. <laughs> I, I It might not happen, but, you know, Rashad Bateman is going to, to siphon targets. Uh, you're going to see, you know – I believe Mark Andrews is number one tight end right now. I just don't know if Hollywood stays in the top twelve. He may, he may be able to do the uh, the touchdown dance every week on these these big plays. But I, you know, again, it's it's what have we seen over the duration of a career for Mike Williams and Hollywood um, that gives me slightly less confidence in them than the other guys on this list. But shout out to Debo. Shout out to Jamar Chase. Guys that yes. are elite options for your fantasy team that maybe you got much later in drafts. Uh, if you look at somebody outside the top 12 that might sneak in, I'll throw Deontay Johnson's name out there. Yeah, he double was on my short list. I mean, double-digit fantasy points in every single game. You know, you you lost Juju. He's a stud. Big Ben cannot throw the ball down the field. He can't. He, he doesn't know how to do it anymore. He tries. I mean, don't get me wrong. He definitely tries. But he's just not been accurate, and he's not been successful. He, and Deontay drops back, and he goes, how about this time? I mean... It's, nope. All right. <laughs> so one of the things my son did in quarantine, which uh, to bring, I don't know, bring more pain to the family was watch the highlights from the Super Bowl. And so what are you doing? I don't know. Do which that? Super Bowl? Why are the, you doing the that? The Cardinals Steelers Super Bowl. Dad, there's no such thing as highlights anymore. We lost. Well, he did. He wasn't even around when that happened. So he had never seen a lot of this. But what I got to see by sitting in there uh, watching these was I got to watch Big Ben. Right. Uh who was less big and was more svelte and like had, it was just interesting to see the contrast between that big Ben and this big Ben that made me go, okay, like, you know, he's not a nightmare, but he's a level down. And Deontay gives him so many opportunities to take those. He, Deontay runs a lot of those Pittman from last year routes where he's coming across the middle and then he breaks up the sideline. And all of a sudden big Ben has a 40 yard pass. That was a 10 yard pass. So that's my, you know, I think he is just such a great fantasy asset because he's so consistent. Yeah, I'm going to throw Justin Jefferson in. I I think it will it would shock me if he does not finish in the top 12. He's just the best wide receiver on his team. You talked about, uh, you know, yeah. Adam Thielen falling out. It's part of that's going to be because Justin Jefferson says, sorry, seat's taken. And I want to shout out Brandon Cooks, who has been very solid for fantasy football considering his, his situation his draft stock, but his schedule moving forward is also incredibly soft after the the bye week of Tennessee, the Jets, the Colts, Seattle, the Jaguars. Like it's a really good run here for for Brandon Cooks, and we fully expect that uh, that Taylor will be back uh, sooner than later. So I think that Brandon Cooks is very interesting moving forward. All right, top ten tight ends right now. Mark Andrews is sitting at number one in points per game, thirteen point two. Very consistent. Travis Kelsey's number two. Dawson Knox is number three. Hopefully getting Dawson Knox back soon. Could be this week. Could be next week. Darren Waller uh, dropped to four. I mean, the, he's dealing with the shoulder. Is that what it was, the shoulder? Uh, I don't recall. Off the I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it was the shoulder, but he he in, he was injured this last game. Was it game. the shoulder? Nah, it wasn't the shoulder. Yeah, a I think I, ankle. Uh, ankle. Ankle. It was go. his ankle, yeah. He's coming off the bye. TJ Hawkinson is at five. Dalton Schultz at six. Gesicki, seven. Pitts at eight. Dallas Goddard at nine. And CJ Uzama at 10. Um, Gronk has not played enough games, but would be third in points per game. But he's only played four games. And, and I have my concerns about Gronk after seeing him try to return and what happened this past week. Uh so that's the list right now at tight end. Obviously, finding value in the second half of the year, very important for our listeners. 
who's somebody that drops out of that list? And, and that would be the same thing as saying, who do you trade high on right now? Because you trade high on this player to somebody who needs a tight end, and then you go pick up one of the guys outside the top 10 that could climb in that could help your team. Trade away high, you're saying, yeah? Um, I am. If, if I'm trading away high, it would be Dalton Schultz, personally. Yeah. Um, because we haven't seen him with, uh, with Michael Gallup. Um, and so if Michael Gallup comes back and kind of just nerfs him a little bit, you're going to be disappointed. The player that I had picked to fall out was Dawson Knox. I don't think you could trade high on him just because he was on pace for you know almost 15 touchdowns. That's where all of his fantasy value comes. And obviously, hey, it's great to have Josh Allen if you're going to try to go for double-digit touchdowns. But if those don't hit, he didn't have a lot of target volume um, to, to secure his baseline. Yeah, I would, I, if anyone's going to fall out there that I'm that I'm going to try and get in front of to uh, capitalize on some trade value it would be Dalton Schultz and like Mike Gesicki is he's tough because he's been doing you know he, he's been doing his work which is incredible work but in the absence of so many wide receivers for the Miami Dolphins and. They're getting healthier. We saw Parker back, and that really ate into Gasicki's target share. We do expect Will Fuller back at some point. That'll be another couple percentage points that can't go to Mike Gasicki. So uh, I'm not – this isn't like a panic sale on, on either of these players. It's just trying to prognosticate and look forward a little bit. Yeah, I, I get that one. If you look um, weeks two or weeks three through – uh, last week when the, all the wide receivers were gone, Mike Gesicki was on a pace of 115 receptions. Oh, baby. And it was no, nice. Nobody's going to ever believe that Mike Gesicki is going to have 115 <laughs> reception right. season. So I, I get that. Once uh, Parker came back this last week, he had three receptions. Yeah, Gesicki's my name as well. And then I, I'll throw George Kittle as the one outside the top 10 that will be a second half star. We have precedent for George Kittle on the field. The value he represents to fantasy players. So I will go with that name. Yeah, and I'm going to take the best uh, rookie tight end. <laughs> the Muth! <laughs> Pat Fryer Muth, baby. He's coming for the top 10. He's going to be the Luthrist out there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and I like Logan Thomas. I've already mentioned him. All right, oh. let's get into the preview. <laughs> Thursday night breakdown. Oh boy, guys. We get the New York Jets taking on the Indianapolis Colts on Thursday night football. The DK Sportsbook line Colts at home, minus 11. The over under is 46 points. Oh, the book not respecting Mike White. No, the book. Unbelievable. <laughs> the book is not respecting uh, Mike White quite yet. Uh, the, you know, I think the story for the Jets beyond the surprise victory. You know, Mike White's yardage totals were impressive, but Michael Carter is the staying power potential of that breakout game. You know, do you feel completely confident with him coming into the week? You know, the Colts defense has been good against running backs, but he's also a pass catcher in this offense and very necessary. That's where most of his work comes. Uh, the Colts have been phenomenal. They're top three against running backs, but that's in part because they're so bad um, in the passing game. And so it, it will be interesting to see if um, – the passing work that Michael Carter's had will continue at the success that that it's that it's been having, and I I would imagine that you're going to have a very uh, a very decent game here from Michael Carter, and in a PPR league, he's going to get enough opportunities. But I would I would also imagine that if you're the Colts, it does not take a, a rocket scientist to figure out what Mike White did last week with all the checkdowns and the short Bengals stuff. couldn't stop it. Oh, well, sure, but they didn't come in being able to game plan for that. It, having a week where you can take a look and be like, hey, let's let's have our coverage kind of prepare for all of these little dump-off screen short stuff, and hopefully they can be prepared for it. So that's where I think uh, Carter's someone I'm playing. Uh, I don't think he's going to have a monstrous game, but he should be okay because the secondary is not that great for the Colts. That's actually the end of my my Jets list. I mean, I'm not I'm not touching anybody else with an implied point total of 17 points on the road. Colts have been playing very well. Uh, no defense, Crowder. No, if Corey Davis is out, no Crowder. The Colts are 24th against wide receivers. I'd play Crowder. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I I don't have a tremendous amount of confidence because I'm putting I'm putting that in Mike White to get it done again. Uh, if you guys are fine with it, that's cool. I think I, I'm going to shoot higher 
uh, on the week. Yeah, than, I, than Jameson. He, I would definitely go Tyreek over uh, Crowder. So yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I'm, he did have nine targets last week. Um, he was the wide receiver twenty four. So I don't. I mean, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yes, that's and isn't that, that yes. the isn't that his He's slogan? Fine. Isn't that the Jameson Crowder slogan? Yeah, yeah. Jameson Crowder, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. So okay, if we can do that. You want to watch somebody on Thursday night? There, there's your option. Um, on the other side of the ball, uh, Jonathan the, Taylor for I mean, life. Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor probably has the the best shot of being the number one running back the rest of the season. It, yeah, and certainly this week. I mean, the the Jets have been horrific. Uh, they're allowing 32.8 fantasy points to the running back on average every game. So, yeah, Jonathan Taylor, who's already been phenomenal, is going to um, have just a fun time. He's going to have a, <laughs> a delightful day in prime time. Just a romp. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a, a rompous affair. So um, I, I love Jonathan Taylor. Um, he's locked in. I think you can't pivot away from Michael Pittman right now with the fire he's been on. But that's kind of where the list ends for me on that side. Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty easy game. Yeah, I mean, Mike is um, just for the sake of the show, the length of the show, everybody's time out there. We we take Mike when he comes into the office. We put him in a little office room, and mm -hmm. he talks about Michael Pittman to himself, like there's a mirror in there. And he talks about him for 15, 20 minutes, so he doesn't have to do it all in the show. I'm addressing the city. That's right. Uh, you're the mayor of Pitt. You weren't willing to accept the mayor. Well, I just I didn't want to like be presumptuous but since the you want uh, since the election yeah since the <laughs> look yesterday was an election day look you and, and my social media they they said i'm the mayor so i will do my best i will serve i had not congratulated i will yet. serve pity city with with the best of my ability you've been the mayor for for a long time even <laughs> even in days when people they didn't respect your office i mean they there were times when when you know they maybe they wanted to elect somebody else it's but, true. But eventually, you know, you work things together on the budget for the city and, you know, you've done a lot of, of, of great work for those in need. And now here we are. Yeah. I would walk by and they're, they say, there goes Mayor McCheese. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. 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 Great. All right. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. You don't like a good Mayor McCheese reference, Jason? I, I don't get the reference. McDonald's, bro. Really? Yes, the I hamburger. mean that's my wheelhouse. But the I, clearly, it's not. I apparently not. You're a fraud. Mayor McCheese is a thing. All right, starts of the week matchups tomorrow. A reminder: follow us on YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Football or subscribe. Click the bell. You'll be able to catch Mike on Sunday live. And uh, I think that's going to do it for today's episode. That will. I'll take it from here, Andy. For my beautiful co-hosts, goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.